of us today need that peace from God. Once raise up your hand. Need that peace, Lord. This is an anxious year indeed. The last, almost the last two years has been a very anxious year for us. And so let's just lay, as we raise our hand, God, today, God, we are asking for that wholeness that comes from you. May the peace that transcends all understanding, God, our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord, so that we can continue, Lord God, to answer your call be a salt and light in this nation, to be a beacon of hope in this nation, our loved ones, family members, and the people that we interact with. And so God, today, as we lift up our burdens, as we raise our hand to you, Lord, we lift our burdens to you. Even right now, God, you're taking away those anxieties, the things that agitates us. Lord, we lift it up to you right now. And Lord, as we receive you from your word, this afternoon, thank you, God, that you are depositing, Lord God, things in our hearts, God, and you're revealing to us who you truly is and what you are supposed to accomplish in our personal lives as well. Jesus, Amen. let's go ahead and put your hands down. We will proceed in the reading of the scripture. If you have your Bibles with you, please open them. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 18. The word of the Lord for all of us this afternoon is this. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, thank you for the word today. And God, I pray that your faith will arise, God, as we receive from your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Praise, Lord. Praise God together. Thank you. Go ahead and take your seats. Welcome to all of you. You know, we are, I'm happy, we are all happy to be able to see all of you once again here on our 3 p.m. service. It just started uh, barely a month ago, and um, we're, we're truly grateful that you're able to join us today. And of course, for those of you who remain or staying online, um, I, we hope that we get to see you soon. Now, uh, in this church, we are exist, in, you know, for two things. That is to honor God and to make disciples. As you probably heard that week in, week out, every time you come here, two things we do. We want to honor God. We want to make disciples. And because we are on a series break, we're going to be uh, hearing a message uh, today uh, about what this church really is all about and what we are set to do and what God's calling for us as a church community. Pero allow me lang to um, uh, share with you some, some of the things that is running in my mind. You know, I realized the last, almost the last two years, oh, before I, I proceed to that, um, later on, bef after this uh, message, uh, we hope to have fellowship with you. Okay? Dan sa mga nandito sa on-site. Okay, sorry. Yung mga nasa online, we love you, okay? Pero yung mga nandito sa on-site, uh, we hope to have fellowship with you because we are here uh, to build relationships with one another as, uh, as well. And so, uh, okay lang ba later on uh, as you stay before we all leave? You know, let's just have time together. Now, we understand. Some of you are concerned. Yung iba sa inyo, kinakabahan pa. Iba yata sa inyo, naka-double mask pa. Yung iba, naka-face shield pa yata. No? Yung iba sa inyo, kinakabahan ako. Ayoko yatang uh, makipag-usap. Okay lang, di ba? So, but help us. On your seats, meron kayong smiley, okay? May smiley dyan. Stick nyo lang sa shirt nyo later on. Para alam lang namin, pwede namin kayong lapitan. Okay lang ba yan? Yun yung in-explain kanina ni, uh, ni Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry, ni Jerry, oh. <laughs> pangit bro. Kung pangit, kuya. <laughs> okay, yun yung in-explain na. So, okay lang ba yan? At least we know 
uh, that we can approach you. Okay, but I'm just have a visual clue. Now, uh, uh, the reason why we want that is because uh, there is something fundamental about the church, and, uh, and that is, in, in, I believe, one of it is actually relationships. We are made uh, to build relationships with one another, and that's why we really want to get to know you. Hindi na nga namin makilala yung mga itsura nyo kasi dahil sa mas, di ba? Mata na lang lagi nakikita natin, okay? So, kaya may smiley para alam namin nakasmile kayo. Na, alam naman namin nakasmile kayo, pero nat- natakpan lang, no? And so, one of the things that we, we desire is to really build relationships because, again, this church, uh, I believe, is here uh, not just for ourselves alone, but also to, for others, okay? And so, um, I realized in the past nearly two years already, we have uh, so many words that we have acquired because of the pandemic. Tama ba ka? Dami nating mga natutunan ng mga lingwahe. No? Uh, for example, ito yung some of the pandemic terms probably na tutunan natin, di ba? Asymptomatic. Ano yung asymptomatic? Yung meron kang sakit pero hindi mo naranaman ng as- 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 sintomas, kaya asymptomatic, no? Yung iba daw may mga joke pa na lumabas diyan. May lumabas pa ng mga memes, alam mo 'yon? Yung asymptopanget. Alam mo 'yon? Parang panget ka pero hindi mo alam. Sakla pa no? Talaga sa sa social media kung ano-ano mga lumalabas, you know? And so asymptomatic, walang symptom. Uh, ano pa? Uh, flatten the curve. Okay? How many of us after nearly two years, the flatten natin yung curve? Yung iba nadagdagan. Okay? Like ako, nadadagdagan lang na nadadagdagan yung curve. Herd immunity. Ano yan? Ginawa tayong mga baka. No? De joke lang. Ginawa tayong mga herds. Physical distancing. Viral load. Twindemic. Uy, may twindemic pala. Oh. Nakita ko lang na uh, ginugol ko. Twindemic. Na, have you heard of that? Twindemic. Kasi may pandemic daw. Tapos because of other... Uh, um, may, may flu na, may COVID, daming mga issues. Uh, and some says uh, the twindemic kasi may pandemic na nga. Health issues. Tapos meron pang economic uh, uh, effects. Kaya twindemic, parang pare-parehas yung mga um, you know, panagdadaanan ng mga tao. Um... Some of us probably used oximeter. We do not have any idea what that is years back. Pero ngayon, parang it's just ano, parang pwede mo lang bilhin, no? Sa, 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 sa favorite mong uh, suking tingdahan, yan. Uh, respirators, ventilators, I'm sure you googled that. You found the, the difference probably. Yung iba, hindi pa rin, hindi ko alam, pastor. Basta, you know, those are words that we thrown there. PPE, one of those. Ano kayo naisip ko? Ano kayo PPE, no? Okay, Pro- personal protective equipment. Yung pala yun. Ano sinasabi lang natin? VPE, VPE. Ano kaya yun? Yung pala ibig sabihin. Mutation ng mga virus. At ito yung pinaka-favorite ko sa lahat. Yung most quotable quote, almost two years na, nakamute ka. Yan. <laughs> dahil sa dami ng Zoom meetings natin, dahil sa dami ng online meetings natin, yan yoyo yung pinaka-quotable quote for the last two years. Sis, nakamute ka. Yan. Sino sa inyo? You know, you've happened that to you. Uh, Tapos nyo mayroon, sino sa inyo, nangyari sa inyo, all of, of, all of us, I believe, no? Lalo na yung mga online or remote work. So we learned so many things and so many words, and these words somehow have affected how we, we live our lives. Some of us, were, you know, it, uh, fear um, uh, gripped us all, all throughout this pandemic. Others, you know, uh, anxiety, and dami talagang attached dun sa na-experience natin in not just terminology. But I want to submit to you today, but in the church, whenever we come together, we also have uh, uh, gained new understanding of certain words during the pandemic. Alam nyo kung ano yun? Nagkaroon ng ibang level ng meaning ang faith. How many of you, you, uh, you, you will agree with me that somehow faith has uh, na-increase ang inyong faith itong pandemic na to? Wala. Okay, thank you. No? Kawawa naman yung pandemic. Ah, kawawa naman tayo mga nila lang. Wala nangyari sa faith natin. Sa atin, many of us, and you know, some of our volunteers learn what missional passion means on a whole new level. So palakpakan naman natin mga volunteers natin. Gabi, we really want to thank you and appreciate you. Kahit nung isik you pa, gabi pupunta yan dito, risking their lives, the possibility of getting infected by the, uh, the virus, but the, yet, nevertheless, they're here serving with us at a whole new level. Michelle, and of course, our Victory Group leaders as well, who week in, week out, nagdi-disciple pa rin, nag-one-to-one pa rin kahit sa Zoom. 
No? We learn about sacrificial giving. People are still giving kahit na nahirapan na sa work. Their commitment and their faith in God never stop them from being generous in all occasions. That's why we had so many initiatives since last year. Helping the poor, giving, you know, giving here and there, being a salt and light. And I'm sure you also have expressed that many ways. Uh, intercession. Diba? Sana, sig- sana yung prayer life natin nag-improve itong mga time ng pandemic. Tama? Anong pinakamatinding prayer natin? Lord, protect me. Lord, help. Ang dami natin mga prayer and intercession. Uh, never stop pre- uh, praying. In fact, uh, we, if you want to join us, you can uh, join us every Thursday. We have a prayer meeting uh, via Zoom. And so we post that on our Facebook links. Join us as we pray and intercede for, uh, you know, for our nation and for the people. Better together is another terminology that we have embodied here. Extra mile, and dami, hindi extra rice, okay? Extra mile. Among our volunteers, they all know that. That's part of our volunteer culture. And so we're really grateful for all of the, 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 the words and the new meaning and the new experience this pandemic have brought us. The reason why uh, I'm, I'm bringing that out is because Hopefully, hindi lang yung terminology sa labas yung lumalalim yung understanding natin. Hindi lang yung worldly terminologies and pandemic terms yung lumalalim sa ano natin, sa buhay natin. Pero hopefully lumalalim din yung pag pagintindi natin sa salita ng Diyos. Hopefully it helps us as well to deepen our understanding because our understanding of the scripture and understanding of God's word helps us live for today. Would you agree with me? Pagka may mga bagay ka na natutunan sa word ni God, mas nag-iiba yung perspective mo, nag-iiba yung pananaw mo sa white, nag-iiba eventually how you conduct and you live your life. And in this case, we read the passage we read earlier in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus was asking His disciples about how, how people perceive the Lord Jesus Christ. What do people say I am? And some people would say about uh, Jesus, He is John uh, the Baptist, Elijah, they throw all these uh, things. And it came to a point where Jesus asked a very personal question to his disciples. Now, question, how many disciples do we have here in this place right now? Okay, wa, okay, 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 dito, hindi pa, alam mo na gagawin sa kanya, okay, okay. Di sino mga disciples? Okay, yung mga hindi nakataas, yan, alam niya na gagawin niyo, no? Uh, we, ano na yun? Clue in. <laughs> okay, don't be pressured. Nakukawawa naman na pressure. Now, but a disciple is simply a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay, since I'm a follower ni Lord, yun, dumami na, no? Oh, yun, ayan, tumakas na yung kamay niya. Okay na, sorry ah, pa first time ko pa yata to dito. No, at least, okay na bro. Okay na. Follower naman pala ni Lord, no? And so, as a, as a disciple, he's someone like that, a student, a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he asked this question to his disciples from what do people say I am? Now, Jesus asked uh, his disciple, but who do you say that I am? Because, our understanding of who Christ is and, you know, about His, uh, his church and how we uh, should behave in a Christian community will really uh, help us when we know the answer to this question. Who do you say that I am? Tino ba talaga si Jesus as we know Him? Is He just a, you know, a person who from the history, a, a, a historic figure, idol of the cross? Is he just a you know a myth, a, a messiah? Uh, simply, some some people believe that G- Jesus is just simply a man, just like everybody else. Our understanding of who he is will really have a great impact how we live our lives today. And so Jesus asked that question: Who do you say that I am? Now, question for all of us here: Who do we think Jesus is? Sino ba talaga si Lord? How about us? If that we are asked of such question, what would be our answer? Who Jesus is? For Peter, good thing, Peter replied something that's so profound that has become the foundation or foundational truth about the church. Okay? And Jesus, uh, Peter said this. Sabi ni Peter, Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, or you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. Peter replied a very powerful truth about who Christ is, about who Jesus is. He is the anointed one. He is the one who is saved. He is the son of the living God. And more than the response of Peter to Jesus' question, it was more interesting to look at how Jesus responded when Peter 
answered that question, who do you say I am? Because Jesus, after Peter uh, responded to him about who he is, J Jesus answered him, sabi ni Jesus, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Pag nakita mo yung Simon Barjona, uh, nila, simply Simon son of Jonah. Okay? Barjona. Sabi ni Jesus, Blessed are you. How many of you, you, you would agree with me that when you came to know who Jesus is, your life has been blessed. Diba? Na-blessed tayo because of who Christ is. A, a revelation and a knowing and an understanding of who Christ is really changes us and blesses us in a profound way that words will not be enough to express and to describe how blessed we truly are. Sabi ni, ni Peter, um, sabi ni Jesus, when you are blessed, blessing pala, makakilala sa Panginoon. No? Blessing pala yun. Isang malaking blessing sa buhay natin, makakilala sa Panginoon. And I hope, if you are new here, or you know, you're just watching, or worshiping with us online, you don't know who Christ is yet, nako, sayang, nako, you are missing a lot. Or maybe you know a little about Him, enough about Him, but not really in a deeper and profound way that has not transformed your life. I hope you'll take time to get to know this Jesus and be blessed by who He is. Sabi niya, blessed are you. Why? Why is he blessed? Because, sabi ni Jesus, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you or has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Any revelation of who Christ is, His Word, His Church, comes from the Father Himself. De, parang, parang sa atin din yan. Unless, di ba tayo, unless you reveal yourself to someone, Right? Your full name, who you are, where you work. You, it has to, you, you, need, you need that. You need to disclose certain information to know certain things about a person. In this case, Jesus, he, the way people understand him is just a carpenter, the son of Joseph and Mary from Nazareth. That's it. His biography, his, his I, I, I human identity, that's all they know about him. But how many of you know that there's so much more about who Jesus is there is so much more about who He is that needs to be known out there and that we need to know as well. And guess what? That knowledge, that knowledge about who Christ is, really is a, something that even though we preach here, week in, week out, our words will never be enough. At some point, we really have to ask God, Lord, reveal yourself to us. Reveal yourself to us and reveal your plans for our lives. Reveal who you are because ultimately, only the Heavenly Father, our God the Father, can reveal His Son to us. Okay? Just like the disciples. And when Jesus said this, now this has become the foundation of this church. The church back then until the church today has become the foundation about that revelation that Christ is the anointed one, the Son of the living God. In verse 18, sabi ni Jesus, which will be the focus of this message today. Sabi niya, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When Jesus revealed, when Jesus, when, when Jesus disclosed the very first time, what the church is all about, it is hinged on His person. Okay? And he, a revelation of who Christ is. The church, sabi niya, is, he is, when, when He said this, that I will build the church, He is the builder of the church, not us. Not the pastors, no, not the human in institution. It is actually Jesus who builds His church. And sabi nga niya dyan, I tell you, you are Peter. So, many people think that Peter was the the foundation or the founder of the church. No, no, no. It's not Peter. It's Jesus. Okay? Many people think that the, the church back in Rome, si Peter daw yung nag-build. Nag yun. Hindi. Hindi yun, yung, hindi yun yung foundation ng church. Hindi si Peter. Now, I know, I understand the confusion. Why many people think that it was Peter who was the, 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 the rock or the foundation of the church. Because Peter, in the original uh, meaning or the original language, means a stone or a pebble. And rock means what? It's almost the same word. It's just that the rock here is called boulder. So Peter, in its original form, Petros, which means uh, stubbles. Hindi pala stubbles. Stubbles, ano pala yun? Okay. Pebbles. <laughs> stubbles. Pebbles. Pebbles. What I mean? Stubbles, parang ano pala yun? Bigote, no? Uh, yun, hairs. Pebbles. Peter is just but a what? Small rock, pebble lang pala si Peter. 
Pero no sinabi ni Jesus, on this rock, a boulder, that's the picture, a boulder, say, mal- mal- malapit lang yung word. Pero i- ibang-iba yung picture. While Peter, although he is one of the, you know, one of the apostles, one of the early disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, he's just but a pebble after all. Yung pala yung sabi ni Lord, Peter, you're Peter, you're just but a pebble. Pero on this rock, on this revelation about who Christ is, on this boulder, on this foundation, I will build my church. And the one thing about this church that he, Jesus describes is that this, the, the church will be a victorious church. No, victorious pala yung description ng, ni, ni Lord ng church. Victorious church, kaya pala ang pangalan natin, victory. No, hindi, 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 joke lang, okay? O, pero medyo, you can, you can, you know, I just invented that. That's not really true. But for us, we understand the church, that the church of Jesus Christ will be victorious. Bakit victorious? Kasi, sinabi na ni Lord that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That the gates of hell will not triumph at the end of the day. I know we have mixed feelings about the church, about what's happening around us. Kaya nga, di ba? Remember, nung natapos yung series natin on Isaiah, about his victory, that we are fighting and we're living on the vantage point of victory. Alam na natin yung ending. Di ba? Alam na natin yung ending. Where the church will stand strong and the church will be victorious. That is the description of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what? Why is that important? And we need to understand that at this point. Because I want us to understand that just like the pandemic that causes us to, you know, to live our lives in a certain way and you know, all these things that we learn around, there are things as well that we need to relearn. There are things that we need to unlearn from the world. Yang mga physical distancing na yan and all of that, although good intentions yan, maganda yung heart yan, there are just certain things that the world will put in us. Pero, pag nakukonfuse na tayo, babalik tayo palagi dun sa ultimate authority natin, which is His Word. And you know what the Word says about the church? Ito yung description ng church. The church, the word church, comes from the word ecclesia which means the gathering of the summoned or the gathering of those who are called. The gathering of the ones who were called out to assemble. Okay, now, so but, but, but why is this important? How many of us, you have been, uh, you know, uh, trying to attend church and being the church in your homes? It was so hard. You know why? Because pandemic has caused us to to get stuck in our homes and prevented us from doing one thing, which is to gather. Buti na lang ngayon, how many of you are grateful na now that we can gather, ibang-iba nung nasa bahay ka? Tama ba ako? Sino sa inyo would agree with me that ibang-iba nung nag-worship ka sa bahay at saka yung nag-worship ka na along with the saints? Tingnan mo yung kalayo mo. Tingnan nyo. Saints yan. Mm-mm. Hindi ka convinced, di ba? Totoo ba to? Oo, oh, oh, yes. Okay? The saints... Ibang-iba pag magkakasama tayo. Tama ba? Kayo ba nag-bear witness ba kayo? Kesa yung nasa bahay kayo. No, nandun lang kayo sa bahay. Ibang-iba talaga yung worship. Medyo, di ba, kahit di naligo, you know, pagpupo lang, relax na lang, chips, chips, popcorn, ganyan. Pero iba pag ka nandito, di ba? Prepped up ka, ready to respond, ready to receive. Ang layo because there's something really about God. In fact, this church, nung in-explain to Jesus, the word church, the first mention of the church is this. Ecclesia, the gathering of the summon, the gathering of the called out ones, the gathering of those who are called. Tingnan mo yung kalayo mo ulit. Mukha ba yung called? Or nilalamig lang? Ko, ito mukhang nilalamig lang to. Ginaw na ginaw, pastor, okay? The gathering of the called out ones, the one that are called to assemble, okay? Now, there are three things that I want us to learn from this truth. From this foundation, a revelation of Christ, of who He is, and uh, what the church, and why the church is here, and why is it essential in our lives today? Bakit important ito? Sabi ni Jesus, ito, di ba? That He is, we are, He will build His church, the ecclesia, the gathering of those who are summoned. Kaya nga, in this church, alam nyo, first thing that we, in, we, 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 have a, we have a saying here in this church, better together. Better together. Our volunteers know that. That's part of our culture. That's part of our corporate culture as a church. We are better together. We are better, you know, every time we come together and we, 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 we share our gifts to one another. 
not realizing that this pandemic will happen, and really, that word together is original, one of the etymology or the, the, the root word or uh, the, 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 the first meanings is actually better to gather. And so whenever we say better together, what we're really saying is better to gather. Because how can be together if there's no gathering? Hello. Diba? Ha, can you be together without gathering? Can you be together without by being alone? Well, there's no together there. That's why every time we come together and we say better together, what we're really saying is that better together, it is better together. Tama ba ako? Anagree ba kayo? Nag-resonate ba to sa mga puso nyo? Kesa nung nasa bahay ka, nag-worship ka doon, di ba? You know, nagkakantaan na kami dito, nagsisigaway ka. Yeah! Sa isa ka, di ba? Worship, wor- di ba? Nag-praise kami dito. Yeah! Worship! Tapos ka doon sa bahay mo. Yeah! Kasi, syempre, yung bahay natin, di ba? Kakalapit lang. Marinig ko ng kapitbahay mo. Anong nangyayari doon? Kala may, may ganap doon. Diba? No matter how, tra- how hard we try, I'm sure, you know, not, not, uh, yung mga nasa online, I'm sure, mga 10,000 dyan nasa online. Yung mga, mga nasa online natin, mga 10 people, okay? Yung mga nasa, nasa online. Grabe yung mga nasa, kahit, no matter how hard we try, we put a, a place, you go to the room, you put a, a ambience, you know, nag-earphones, kahit anong gawin natin, ibang-iba talaga yung nasa bahay at saka nandito dito. Tama? Nag-agree kayo? Ibang layo. Ang layo talaga. There is something about uh, uh, coming together because our faith is not just personal but actually communal faith. And that's why we are better together and we are better together. That's why this church, Ecclesia, one of the core uh, definition is really this. One of the core idea that I want to share with us today is this. The church is here so that we can you know, have a shared location or requires somehow shared location. To be, ga- to be able to gather, to be able to be together must have what? Shared location. Kahit sa bahay natin, kahit yung pamilya natin, magkasama-sama, iba pa rin talaga nakasama mo yung ka-victory group mo. Tama ba ako? Iba pa rin, o yun, mga talagang mga ka-victory group mo, di ba? Yun. Ano yung victory group? Mamaya, pag mag, mag-usap-usap tayo, pwede, okay? We will explain to you more of that, okay, about Victory Group. Wala pa akong Victory Group, Pastor. Mamaya rin, magkakaroon ka, okay? We hope that you will find one today. Really, to gather, to be able to gather, we must come into the shared, to, in a shared location or common location. Now, this is the most superficial um, meaning of the word church, really. The super, most basic because it is only an excuse to do what we are supposed to do, and that is this. Part of the church and its calling, every time we gather into a common location or shared location, tool lang yan. Yan yung pinaka-basic description. Pero tool lang talaga. Itong building na to, tool lang to. Because the church is not really the building, it's about the people. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo, yung kalayo mo. Yan, siya yung church. Okay? Kaya yung mga church, pag tinignan mo yung mga church, ah, ikaw pala yung church, but parang di halata? De, joke lang, okay? Ito pala yung church. Yung ibang church, medyo maliit, payat, chapel. Yung iba, medyo, ba, parokya, ba, talaga naman. Pero, kita mo naman, merong mga kagaya namin ni Jerry, cathedral, at saka basilica. Oh, wag nyo kaya, pag may nagsasabi sa inyo, bakit, uy, parang ano, bes, parang lumalaki kayata. Uy, pinapalaki ko yung templo ng Panginoon, di ba? Because the Bible says, that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the church. Oh, sa inyo, hirapan si Lord sa inyo. Parang si Kev, ito, pinapalaki namin. Dahil joke lang. Okay, hindi to to lahat to. <laughs> okay. Pero it's us, the people. And whenever we come together in a shared location like this, this building will be wala, empty building if without, without the people. This building is not really the church. This is just at best facility. That's why we don't call this place a church. We, call, we, call, we even call this place a center or a main hall. Because apart from the people, this cannot be the church. The reason why it becomes a church is because we are sharing it along with the saints. Whenever we come together, then this place becomes the Church. Okay? And so, tingnan mo ulit yung, gabi, appreciate mo naman yung church. 
Tingin kayo sa katabi niyo, magkamumuhay kaway kayo dyan. Uy, church, yan. Hi, church. Okay, grabe. Huwag mo na insultihin about ano. Uy, cathedral, huwag ganun, okay? Uy, basilika, walang ganunan dito, okay? We just love one another. So, importante yung shared location. Now, the shared location is the most, uh, is the basic foundation of this understanding of what church really is. Because ultimately, it is simply a tool to do one thing or to do at least few things. One of which is to share life, okay? One of which is to share life. Not only to share location, kasi pwede ka naman share ng location but not sharing life, correct? That's why a lot of you, or at least maybe not a lot, some of you, you've been sharing space here. You've been sitting here week in, week out. You've been joining us. You're, 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 you're coming together and you're gathering. But you can have a, what a shared location but not actually share life. And when you look at the early church in the book of Acts, we'll now move. Okay, so if you have your Bibles with you, naku open nyo kasi this is not the, the usual preaching wherein we, we keep on a, uh, on a particular text. We'll flip through on different passages of Scripture. So if you have your Bibles with you, please open them in, in Acts. Okay, we'll be reading from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. You will see that the early church, they are doing something beyond just gathering. And when do they do gather? Ano yun? O, oh, sama-sama lang? Kasi pag gathering lang yun, as walang, wala itong particular element na to, then maybe ano lang yun? Partying. No? Hindi yun church. Because you can gather in a share, in the same location and not be the church. What makes the church so distinct whenever they gather? Because of this. Of Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Whenever the people of God gathers, eto yung nangyayari. In Acts chapter 2, and they devoted themselves to the, what? Apostles teaching. Ito in teaching. The word, apostles teaching. This is coming from apostles. It is the apostles who wrote this uh, letters and this account. The apostles teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. That's why, kaya nga, ayun, paulit-ulit ko sinasabi. Itong sticker na to is simply a what? a means for us to have fellowship with you. Kasi wala kaming visual cue. Baka mamaya, lapitan ka namin, tapos na, 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 ayaw mo nang bumalik. Ayaw ko nang bumalik din sa church ito. Baka kinakausap ako. Dapat physical distancing. So, ito na lang. Tulungan nyo na lang kami so that we'll know. We want to pray for you. Kasi yun sabi doon, no? When they gather, there was a teaching. This is a teaching of the apostles. Not my teaching word. There is what? Fellowship. Shared life to fellowship. And every time we fellowship, what, the, what do we do whenever we fellowship? Hindi lang to, uy, tala, lika dito, what's the latest? No? Hindi lang to gathering ng mga magkokwentuhan at magchami-chami, di ba? At mag-share ng mga kung ano-anong mga latest. Latest na mga marites. Okay, hindi yon. Ano yung latest meme dyan? Ano yung latest story? What's the scoop? Hindi yon. Every time we come together to fellowship, what we're really doing is to receive the word, receive the teaching, to share life, breaking of the bread, prayer, magkakaroon ng intimacy because eating at that time, and even I believe this time, is what? A very intimate activity. Correct? Right? Before the pandemic, and more so now in pandemic, pag may umupo dyan sa lamesa mo, na stranger, ano ma feel mo? Makumakain ka mag-isa, di ba? Mas may umupo dyan. Kung di, before the pandemic, someone eats, sits in front of you, sino ka? Umalis ka dito dahil baka ituso ko sa'yo to. Di ba? Ganyan, okay? I mean, that's how you feel. You're, you feel that your space, personal space is invaded. But if you gather as a church, we're not supposed to have that barrier. We should have what? Relationship, intimacy. That's why in this church, we have this environment where we can break bread together. And that is called Victory Group. Okay? Oh, talagang ano, on cue ah. <laughs> okay, what is the Victory Group? It is a place where we can break bread together. Kasi can we eat with all of you? We can't build. I can't build with everyone. I can't build deep relationships with everyone. Right? Mayroon lang akong, ang tawag dun, span of care. I can only care for a few people. Sabi nga nila, 120 at max that you can only in, uh, be, build meaningful relationship, some says. We can't. It's just humanly impossible. But hopefully in this church, you will find someone. Not someone in your mind, okay? Mga single dyan. Hindi yung someone na yun, okay? Pero pwede na rin. 
Kung makahanap ka man, pwede na rin. Di ba, Bal? O nansang ka man? Laging si Bal na lang yung nayayari natin, ano? Kung nakahanap ka man, the good. Kasi ako, nahanap ko sa church. Yung, yung aking iniibig. Now, we did not just find someone. It was in the context of doing life together, serving together, be, fel, having fellowship together, and praying together. Prayer meeting is actually part of that. Praying for people. So we want to pray for you. Okay? We want to pray for everyone. And I hope you also want to pray for someone. Right? Hindi ka lang nakaupo Okay, I'll be the church. I want to receive on the receiving end. Hopefully, we're also on the giving end. Prayer. And so that is what the church, every time we come together. Now, shared life. From shared location, we are called to share life. The building is just an excuse, a low common location, a shared location, just an excuse in order for us to share life together. Look, in those days, alam nyo ba, in those days, walang, may, walang pandemic, pero you know what prevented them from meeting together? Persecution. Distance, kasi wala pang, wala pang, hindi pa matagal, may, walang grab dati. Walang grab nung araw. If you want to go to one place, you have to walk. For days, okay? Ar- araw bibilangin mo to just to get to. So in those days, ano na talaga? Medyo si Paul, yung ministry is already distant. In fact, the Bible, I know some of you were here thinking, eh, we can do that naman. We can share life naman online. Kaya nga meron ng Zoomustahan. Sino sa inyo, you've done that. Zoomustahan. Ang galing na ng technology natin ngayon, di ba? You know, the technology allows us to be able to do this quote, and go to share life together despite of what? Of distance, right? But how many of us will know that that will also fall short? Because we really can't share life together apart from being together, apart from your presence, because there's really something about the human touch. Since you're a victory group leader, Victory Group Leader, tas kamay, mga Victory Group Leader. O yan, lalapitan nyo mamaya, yung mga maghahanap ng Victory Group, okay? Victory Group, diba? Tama ba ako? Have we tried one-to-one, Correct? Doing one-to-one via Zoom. So, okay naman. For a time, it's okay. Pero iba, pag umiyak na, when that person starts to cry because of the realities of life, because of brokenness, because of the pain that they go through, it's so difficult to encourage someone from Zoom. Uy, you know, okay lang yan. Tap-tap na lang ito, virtual hug na lang. Iba! Iba yan, kahit virtual hug, iba-iba effect. There's something about the human touch that heals brokenness and broken bones. There's something about the human touch that when someone is there, because you know how we really share life and transform someone's life and touch someone's life deeply? It is by being present and by being there. That is the way we touch someone's life. Kaya si Paul, look, in Romans, buksan yung Bible nyo ulit, Romans chapter 1, tingnan nyo, verse 8. And then sa screen, pero I want you to practice opening your Bible kasi apostles teaching to eh. Ito yung ginagawa natin. Oh, verse, eight, verse 8 of Romans chapter 1. Look, for Paul, it was not enough to just write letters to the church. It demands proximity. There's something about presence that transforms lives. Sabi ni Paul, first, I thank God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. Verse 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing, I mentioned you always in my prayers, asking that somehow, by God's will, I will, I will, uh, the God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. Ibig sabihin, nakita mo si Paul, although he would write letters to, to, to pastor the church, in many places, from a distance. Diba? From a distance. Yan siya talaga original na, from a distance. Diba? He pastors the church. Okay, don't lie. Huwag na. Huwag na tayo kumanta. Okay. He, he was the original. So he wrote, he will write these letters to pastor the church. Pero look at Paul. Paul, there is a deep desire for Paul to come. From wherever he, he was writing this to coming to Rome which is, they said, the end of the world at that time, at least the end of the known world. Coming to you, verse 11, sabi niya, For I long, long talaga, no? For I long to see you. 
Kayo po ba, mga nandiyan sa online, do you long to see us? Kasi we long to see you. The 10,000 of you. No? Kala mo naman, napakadami. No? Kaya, kung ilan man kayo nandiyan sa online. No? We long to see you. That's why here in the church, kaya kahit na nag-pandemic, there was ECQ, there was GCQ, we never stopped from having, uh, you know, coming together and having relationship together and building each other's faith. There is a longing to see one another. Hopefully, there's a longing to see what each other. So, yung mga nasa victory group nyo, sana naglulong kayo to see them. Yung iba, sa sobrang inis nyo, ayaw nyo na silang makita. Ayaw ko talaga silang makita. Buti na lang, pastor. Nag-pandemic. Wow, di ba? Lalim best, no? Lalim ng, lalim ng hugot. I long to see. There is a longing to see. There's a longing to share life. That I may impart, sabi ni Paul, that I may impart to your spiritual gift. It's not enough to be, you know, to worship together from our, the comforts of our home. For Paul, it was necessary to get out of his way. There's a longing to get out of his way to be able to impart spiritual gift. And ano pa? Not only to give sp- spiritual gift, but also to strengthen you. How many of you know you need strength right now? Everyone, you know, that, that we, that I, I, don't, I, I don't think there's anyone in, in, in the whole world after or when pandemic hit, hindi kailangan ng strength. Sino sa inyo, natakot kayo? Natakot kayo during the pandemic. Di ba ako, every time nag-serve ako dito, pag uwi ko, hindi ko alam, mag uwi ba ako ng COVID eh. Di ba, paglabas mo ng bahay, pumasok ka, bumili ka lang ng grocery, pa, papanik tayong lahat. Pa, may, may COVID ba ako pag uwi? Sobrang anxious natin. Eh, ang anak ko, sabi ko sa mga anak ko, you children, you know, when daddy comes home, I might have COVID, you might get it, you might die, but we'll see you in heaven. Ganun. Morbid, ano? Parang ano. Pero the, the, the reality is there. It hurts us. It pains us. We've lost loved ones. I, my father, you know, was one of the early casualty of pandemic. But you know, despite of all of that, we never stopped. You know why? Because the church is meant not just to share location, but also to share life together. Is this necessary? Kailangan ba talaga gatong level? Maybe we can just be satisfied being online in the meantime. Well, it is, for Paul, it's necessary. It's necessary of all the trouble. You know why? You know why? Because he understands that there is a labor that goes into all of this. That just like our Lord Jesus Christ who gave His life for Paul was a revelation for him that he will not, sit, sit, he will not uh, just sit down and do nothing. For Paul, he will also take the moment to give his life for the church. In Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, look how Paul has suffered. Sabi niya, five times I receive at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes less one. 40 lashes, it is given to uh, offenders. Okay? 40 lashes. Weeping. Ganyang katindi yung persecution. But for Paul, it was all worth it. Three times I was beaten with rod. Sorry. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. So he was narrating his suffering and all of this. Three times I was shipwrecked. At night and a day I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys. Frequent journeys in danger from rivers, dangers from robbers, danger from my own people. In those days, traveling is really dangerous. Ngayon kasi ano na eh, di ba? Convenient. No? Pag, pag uh, na-delay pa, nagagalit tayo, aeroplano. So ito, in their time, it's really dangerous. Dangers from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers. In toil and hardships, or in hardship through many a sleepless nights, uh, through, uh, through many sleepless nights, hunger, thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. That is the kind of suffering that Paul has to endure. Not only that, sabi niya, verse 28, and apart from other things, there is a daily pressure on me, on my anxiety for all the churches. For Paul, it was all worth the trouble. Not only to share, come together in a shared location, to be able to share life with others because he understands that there is a shared labor that must go into because that is the church community, ladies and gentlemen. 
the church community is not here to, you know, just merely care for you, but actually to prepare you for the labor that is coming ahead. So, itong parang pamilya lang, di ba? Sa bahay nyo, di ba? Sa bahay natin, guys, sa bahay natin, sino sa inyo, you know, in your house, you, especially if you have small kids, you teach them to wash dishes, to throw trash. Do you, have, you, do you train your children? Hindi kami, pastor. Bakit? Kasi isang kumpas ko lang, darating na ang mga ates. Wow! Kau na. Di ba? Pero tama ba? You would agree with me that it's right and it's important to share what? To share responsibilities to, to family members. Because what, that's what family, family members do. They share and they labor together out of love, right? Out of their love for one another, they serve one another. Correct? Hopefully that is your disposition as well. Because there is a shared labor that comes in every time. And that's why, once again, I want to appreciate all our volunteers, you know, from ushers, Comtech, yung admin natin, yung kids' church natin. Nakala nyo walang kids' church? Meron, meron, meron. No, ay nangyayari siya every Saturday. Virtual. Kasi wala pang physical class, eh, no? And so that's what we've been doing because there is a labor that goes into it. All of this is simply to be able to live out this church that Jesus said, he will build. As we end, I want us to stand together. When Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, let me just go back to the scripture in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus said, when he asked his disciples, who do you say I am? And they revealed, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Essentially, what really Jesus is saying is this. From that vantage point, from that revelation, sabi niya, I will build my church. That Jesus is the builder of the church, not the pastors. Definitely not us. It is Jesus who builds the church. He is the one who builds it. And the way he built the church, sabi niya, this church will not, will not be overtaken by the gates of hell or will not prevail against it. That the church will be victorious. And how many of us have lived the last two years, have lived a defeated life. Defeated by the anxiety, defeated by the worries, defeated by the, by the concerns of, of the things, you know, our jobs. And, you know, I think it's, it's just good enough for us to be reminded once again that the church that Jesus is trying to build is a victorious church. And so regardless of what you've been through, all the wounds, all the scars, all the pain, all the suffering, that we've been through the last few days or the last few months. My hope in my prayer is that you are, every time you come here, is that you experience the restoration that comes from His Word, that you are strengthened by the faith of the believers. You are strengthened by the faith of the saints as well. And so I want to pray for us today that we will be this kind of church, not only sharing common space or sharing location, but also sharing life with one another so that we can strengthen one another and be able to help one another, you know, in the things that we go through. Lord, thank you. Thank you, God, for your calling for us, your calling for the church. To share life, to carry each other's burden. And some of us, God, has been weary. Lord, we're tired, we're exhausted. Lord, I pray that coming here will just give us enough gasoline once again to keep on moving forward, to take the next step. Some of us, Lord God, is just really, really, really tired and weary. And that's why you came, Jesus. And you said in your word that you have come to give life and have it to the full. That you're inviting your people those who are weary, those who are exhausted, to come. For you said in your word that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so you're inviting those that are broken, those that are, uh, are, are, are tired and weary, to come to you, Jesus, and find rest. Lord, our prayer is that every time we come together, God, that peace that transforms lives, peace that transforms that quiets our soul, the peace that quiets our minds, Lord. We will receive that, Lord, even in this time. And so, God, thank you 
In fact, that's you. You're, you're just, just so much burden in your heart right now. You just lift up your hand as a sign of surrender. God, I'm just surrendering that burden to you. Go ahead. God sees that. Yes, the Lord sees that. Those of you who are burdened, talagang bigat lang ng dinadala nyo, lifted up to God. We're here. This is the church community. The church community is here to carry that burden with you. So if you're, if you're standing with these people, can you just gently lay your hand on them? You know, our volunteers and our, 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 uh, our leaders will just lay their hands on you. As we, you know, stand, just, they will just stand beside you. Don't worry. And I pray for you. Lord, thank you. Thank you, God, for the hands that are raised. God, we cast our cares upon you. Lord, we lift our burdens to you. Holy Spirit, minister to us. God, you see the hands that are raised. Some of us, Lord God, we've been crying out and seemingly deliverance is not yet inside, God. But thank you for reminding us again that the kind of church that you're trying to build is a victorious church. Lord, it's not a defeated church. We're not defeated. We may be knocked down, Lord, but we will never be defeated because our God is victorious. We may be wounded right now, God, but thank you. Your word says, Lord, that the gates of hell will not prevail. Some of us have been fighting certain temptations, Lord God. Thank you that we will overcome. And so, God, as we lift our hands to you and surrender our lives to you, Lord God, in all these cares and all this anxiety and all this pain and suffering, thank you that you are strengthening us right now. So, God, may your Holy Spirit bring strength. May your Holy Spirit bring comfort. May your Holy Spirit and the presence of your people strengthen us once again so that we can continue to labor together as a church community as well. So God, we honor you. We lift our hands to you and we give you thanks. All God's people say, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Now, okay, here's what we will do. Of course, as, as you know, this church, we will send you out in a bit, okay? But the reason why we ask you also is to be able to put that sticker on your shirt so that we get to know you, so that we can pray for you specifically. So okay lang mo yun. We will dismiss now, okay? But uh, we'll take time as well to pray for one another and just to have fellowship and just to get to know you. Now, of course, if you're uncomfortable, you, you, you're, you're, you're free to go, all right? God bless you. And for those of you who are online, may the Lord bless you and keep you and strengthen you. And may you continue to be the church that God also has ask us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you again next week.